All right, you've seen the intense video here on Fox Weather over the past few hurricane seasons. Sail drone, it's best known for capturing terrifying images from inside powerful tropical systems. That's what you're looking at right here. Uh, what you're seeing was captured from inside Hurricane Milton. That footage taken about 40 nautical miles from Milton's eye in the Gulf back in October. These uncrewed surface vehicles collect data to give scientists a clear look at the storm conditions right there at sea level in the storm itself. The drones track temperature, pressure, wind speed, and wave height, all in which improve tropical forecasts. But the work is not confined just to the hurricane season. Now the California-based Maritime Defense and Oceanographic Survey Company with operations in St. Petersburg, Florida, has launched two sail drone Voyager uncrewed uh, surface vehicles off the coast of the Sunshine State. Their mission to map the ocean floor and the Gulf uh, right along the, the Sunshine State's coastline. So for more on this, let's bring in the Vice President of Ocean Mapping for Sail Drone, Brian Conan. Brian, uh, great to have you with us on Fox Weather. This is an exciting project. Uh, how did this all get started and, and what's the rollout like? Right, so the state of Florida decided to uh, launch a campaign for coastal resilience and part of that was uh, mapping the or all around the coast of Florida. So the, the little part we're doing in the Gulf, uh, they've actually have mapped uh, from the, you know, on the eastern side on the Atlantic all the way down through the Keys and up into uh, the panhandle of Florida. And the idea behind this was um, to improve the, the coastal resilience and the, and the modeling available to the residents of Florida. And so it's about a $100 million project sponsored by the state of Florida to collect these data and then turn it into usable information to support forecasting. Wow. And you said the words coastal resilience. Boy, is that top of mind in Florida, especially after a couple of devastating storms last season. What could this data do for assessing vulnerable spots on the coastline? We know there are many. And for, for storm surge prediction. Right. So before you can actually model storm surge and inundation models, you know, flooding inland, you, you really need to have that high resolution bathymetry as your baseline um, in, within the model. Uh, so that way, um, as the models are running and as the conditions are changing, uh, you're able to better predict where that water is going to uh, be the highest as it's getting pushed by the storm uh, or potentially, you know, depending on the winds being drawn out and better predict uh, which areas might get uh, severe flooding. And of course, tides always come into play as well. You know, what's the timing with the tides? Is it a low tide or a high tide? So being able to accurately model that uh, really is the key um, to understand where the water is going to go. So a lot of times we worry about about wind damage, um, but that storm surge is is really you know the power of water is is significant. And so being able to better predict that is is the goal. Yeah, Brian, I was surprised uh, when I when I was reading through uh, some of the latest on this project. A lot of the data, uh, the bathymetry you mentioned. It's fairly old data. At least it's nowhere near as as high resolution as as what you're collecting. Right. And the, you know, the, there's a lot of reasons for that. One, especially on the Gulf side of Florida, it's very shallow and mapping in shallow water uh, takes a, a long time. It's very expensive when you're using uh, crude vessels. And so by adding in uncrewed systems like Voyager that you're seeing here now, um, we can actually go out there and do kind of that, you know, long endurance uh, kind of a monotonous mapping of the ocean bottom um, and, and feed this data back in. So, but they've used in this project, they've used airborne LIDAR, uh, which can see down to, depending on clarity of water, can see down to 20, 30 meters, um, which really is right up close to the coastline, which, which is really good, especially in Florida where you may have mangroves and, right. and other things that uh, you, you can't get a boat close to. Yeah, you guys call them uh, USVs, uncrewed surface vehicles. That's what the, the Voyager is. Long endurance, a low carbon footprint, and that allows these vehicles to, to be built for long journeys, essentially. How does that enhance what you're able to do with these? Because, again, we all know them from sailing into the middle of a hurricane where people don't want to be. But are there uh, many other applications that, that you're hoping to use these vehicles for? Oh, absolutely. You know, the, the ones we send to hurricanes are our Explorer vehicles, which are much smaller uh, than the ones you see here. So it's, it's 23 feet long. The Voyager's 33 feet which allows us to put more technology on there, including 
um, radar and, and AIS and a, and a better camera, but more importantly is that sonar that we map the bottom with. But you know, we're also using this same platform uh, for the Navy and the Coast Guard right now to do maritime security operations uh, on our maritime borders. Wow. Uh, looking for you know, counter drug, counter human trafficking, all those things that uh, you need more eyes and ears on the water. That's what these vehicles allow you to do because they can stay at sea for you know, three to six months. Um, that really gives you that persistence that you need when you're trying to monitor large pieces of the ocean. And it's a big ocean out there. That is very cool. And these are important tools. But before we let you go, I have to ask you, we're Fox Weather. We consider the primary mission to be uh, those hurricanes. And we're just 82 days away from the start of the Atlantic hurricane season. Uh, what's, what's the gear up period like? What, what's the plan for the season ahead? Well, um, you know, we're hoping to do similar to what we did last year, which was to have a dozen of the, the hurricane drones deployed in the Gulf and in the Atlantic in order to intercept uh, the storms. And, you know, getting the video and, and observations in the storm are great, but it's, it's really the science we've been contributing to uh, trying to understand intensification. That's been our whole purpose all along is to measure exactly what's happening between the ocean and the, and the hurricane itself from inside of it. We really just don't know enough to model that well. So, you know, hopefully we can do better modeling of intensification, better modeling of, of storm surge and inundation, and all those things come together is going to make it a, a safer um, for all the residents along the coast, not just in Florida. Yeah, it's exciting data, and we're looking forward to, to seeing more of it and continuing this discussion, seeing where the research goes. I see a lot of parallels to the hurricane hunters who are busy year-round with important work that isn't necessarily what they're famous for, at least with this project, with the bathymetry. Uh, but, yeah, uh, we're getting awfully close to the new hurricane season. This is an exciting project. Best of luck with it. Uh, Brian Conan with Sail Drone. Uh, thanks for telling us about it this afternoon on Fox Weather. Thanks for having me on here, Ian. You bet.